Righty ho then, we shall begin. Hello and welcome to the Norwich Games Festival 2019. Unless you've been here already, then welcome back. <laughs> so today's talk will be on terrible video game covers, the gallery <coughs> of shame. A nice easy one. We can point at bad things and laugh because a lot of these do the rounds and you've seen them before. But a lot of them I have discovered recently yeah, they're worth looking at. And by worth looking at, I mean not worth looking at at all. So I was nearly late today because of ants. <laughs> I discovered a load of ants in my house and thought, this isn't good. Don't like ants in the house. Started to look for where they came from. Still didn't find out. And then suddenly realised I'd completely lost track of time. So I could have been at home now looking at ants. <laughs> I feel I've made the wise decision to come here, frankly. Though if anybody does know the main points of a house that ants come in through, do let me know afterwards, because uh, I need to stop this thing before it becomes an infestation and they get in the cereal. Mm. Right, so, video games. They have covers. You're probably aware of this already, I would imagine. It's a bit of art. They stick on the front of the case, so you see it in the shop and go, ooh. And that's probably it. Used to be more important than they are now, because these days everybody's plugged into the internet and reading all exciting reviews and news and getting all the latest hype and that kind of thing. And it's really only grandmas who actually go into a charity shop, see something on the cover and maybe pick it from that. Back in the day, they were more important when you would go into the, the Vic Centre or something to see the latest game for your Vic 20 and see the cover and think it looked exciting and buy it and realise you've wasted three quid. Great thing about Vic Centres was they would let you play the games beforehand. But hey, we were all too nervous to actually do that back in the times. So anyway, <clears throat> I think there are five ins which a terrible video game cover will hit at least one of. The first is incompetent. Is it just badly drawn? Is it badly put together? Is it just something that nobody would want to look at? Is it incoherent? Is it just a mess? Do you not know what it's supposed to be? Do you not know what's going on? Do you look at the cover and think this looks like a fever dream, not like something I can play for three hours on my spectrum? <laughs> Inane. Is it just naff? Does it make you laugh at it? Do you want to point at it and go, good grief, look at that? That's not a good selling point. This one is purely for the consumer, incorrect. Because the people selling games don't care as long as you buy it which is sort of the main point of a cover. But from our point of view, you kind of want it to at least be a little bit like the game is. You know, you don't want a picture of a big spaceman with a space gun and it's actually about a fairy princess who eats apples or something. <laughs> I'm trying to think if that one's in here. No, but it came close. And the last is inexcusable. There's one thing that's totally inexcusable on a cover, making it an off-putting image. You want people to buy it. It's in a shop, it's quite a lot of money, you don't want them to go past and go, ugh. There's a few of those in here, so look out for those. Right, I'm going to put my five ins here so I don't forget. I probably will though. Nope, keeps falling over. Save me HDMI cable. Yay. <laughs> right. So let us begin with the early days of games, the really early days, where people would write text adventures in their bedrooms and sell them entirely by mail order. No hint of an artist. That leads us to things like <laughs> Quest for the Golden Egg Cup. 48K Spectrum, it's a Chad in a tub. <laughs> What is the game about? I don't know, it's a badly written text adventure, like they all were back then, frankly. And exactly the same for The Prisoner. Now, I'm pretty sure The Prisoner is the reason that some library somewhere stopped the staff being able to use the photocopier. Because it's clearly just bits they've cut out of stuff and then knocked a load off. I mean, it's... well, look at it. They tried, at least they tried, whereas that one is just more sort of trying than anything, really. Um, there's a lot like this. Um, surprisingly, quite a few hand-drawn ones as well. There was one I desperately wanted to find I saw years ago. It was just called something like Holiday in Chipping Sodbury or something. And somebody had done like a child's drawing of a boat on the front. It was amazing, and I've never found it again. It was for the spectrum. One day, I will find that picture. But not today. Here's a little example of what happens if you draw your own cover 
and then your game actually gets picked up by a publisher. It changes from <laughs> Castle Top to Castle Top. Yeah, so I think what we've got here is Paul Weller being shot in the back with an arrow when he's wearing his favourite hot dog suit. Um, I like the way they've put the C over the A to try and do something a little bit artistic at least. And the Atari logo. I, I didn't realise that was an Atari logo until like two years after I first saw this. But, um, and this is obviously the nice arty one they did for the actual release in the shops. The weakness being, this one's incompetent, this one is incorrect. It is a hunchback clone, you're a little guy running across the top of a castle. There's no knights, there's no catapults, there's no pond. There's no weird horse tattoo? I don't quite <laughs> get the point of that one, but um, it's a nice piece of art, but totally unre unrepresentative of the game. Mm. Frankly, it looks a lot more interesting than the game was. Anyway, so, you know, this is clearly no money. This is a lot of money. Doesn't always work like that. Good old Granny's Garden. <laughs> Granny's Garden, many of you will remember from school. Educational license game, very expensive, particularly this version on the Plus 3 disc. Um, by good old Formation. We wrote our name on a typewriter, Limited. Um, I, mean, I, I think this is maybe... When they were coming up with a story for the Blair Witch Project, this is what they wrote on the napkin in the pub. It's, it's just like a load of sticks and a woman with needles in her fingers and no eyes. <laughs> this gets worse when I look at it, actually. The thing that really freaks me out is uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, children. Granny is here. Also, this has been drawn with the ruler, yet is in some way not parallel to the top or bottom. Of the I mean, Come on, guys. That's the raven, by the way, I think. <laughs> what happened there, I don't know. But anyway, there's no excuse, because Formation charged a fortune for these things, the educational licenses to schools. You think they'd at least give it some kind of colour. And to this day, by the way, Granny's Garden is still a thing. You can buy a hideously expensive PC version for your school or club or children you just don't like. <laughs> I found a copy in a charity shop, which uh, possibly makes me Britain's richest man. Anyway, <coughs> this time they had an artist, but the drugs, man, the drugs. <laughs> um, so I'd, I'd like to try and explain what's going on here, but this really does fall into the incoherent. You've got the human-eyed goat monster, <laughs> a boot, which is a Canadian reference, I don't know, but um, there is no art that stretches on past this, by the way, if you fold it out, this is literally it. You've got some snakes, you've got Mjolnir, you've got shards of something? I don't know. You've got the weird jumping kangaroo, a, a shadow of a hat? I honestly don't know. And none of it comes together, because that's in a different style to those. I don't really understand this. The game itself is basically a Manic Minor rip-off, where you play Antaru the Mutant. He's a kangaroo. He's a bloody kangaroo. There's no getting around it. He's not a mutant. Unless, I don't know, he's got weird DNA. But I'm going to be honest, in an eight-pixel tall creature, you don't really get that impression. Ah, oh dear. Now, one of my personal favourites. Crazy Kong from Anarog Software. This is used on two games, Anarog Kong on the Spectrum and Crazy Kong for the VIC-20. Uh, Anarog Kong being one of the worst games ever released, but that's another story for another day. So, King Kong himself, sort of drooling, possibly dead, um, can't really tell. Uh, the woman's been kidnapped, doesn't care, just looking at her nails. Amazing 80s uh, comb over there, that's nice. Um, drops her purse for some reason and her umbrella. I don't know what's happened here. Porky Pig had a child with an alien <laughs> and he's very angry about having to wear Popeye's trousers. Um, so he's smashing a barrel is what's going on here. Why the bits of the barrel look like bananas, we don't know. This has never been uh, mentioned. That's the bottom of the barrel. This is all the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> Oh, dearie me. Um, so the big question here, other than who drew it and were they tracked down and punished, is why isn't he standing on anything? <laughs> like, isn't that the most basic thing? Like, just draw a line and then paint it black underneath or something. Don't have him just floating up in the air <laughs> near possessed Kong. Oh, my goodness. Anyway. <clears throat> oh, man, I only saw this one for the first time last week, and it's, it's got a special place in my heart. Kuma Software for the NSX. Eric and the Floaters. So this, 
basically, this had a bad cover on the spectrum. Then I discovered the MSX version, which somehow is exponentially worse. So Indiana Jones has had his eyes pulled out. He's tucked his shirt into his jeans, and he's being attacked by zombified jelly babies? <laughs> Not really understanding. Now, does anybody know what Eric and the Floaters is? Oh, I thought somebody might. The hint is the Hudson Soft B. Eric and the Floaters is the official conversion of Bomberman for the MSX. <laughs> they changed the name from Bomberman to Eric and the Floaters and put a top hat on Bomberman. It's absolutely true. Same for the Spectrum and possibly Amstrad. Can't remember. But yeah, for some reason, Hudson Soft thought Bomberman? No. Little cute characters? No. We need a weirdo. <laughs> Preferably one who's got, for some reason, a big poo strapped to his waist. <laughs> Fair enough. But what do you expect when you're getting the bloody bear from um, Tekken to write your games for you? I mean, that's what's going to happen, isn't it? So this one was, next one was introduced to me by Mr. Dan Nerd Cubed, Internet Man. Time Zone! <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> I, I'm going for incoherent... <laughs> Incorrect as well if you've played the game. Of course you haven't. Uh, um, and possibly towards the inexcusable, because it is quite off-putting. I mean, is the dog shooting lasers from its eyes, or is it being shot in the eyes? <laughs> I'm not, not entirely sure. Whatever it is, it's having a bad time of it. So the idea is it's supposed to be some sort of robot dog like K9, isn't it? And instead it's just like a sheepdog wearing boots. <laughs> it's got like a spark plug or something in its mouth. That, is that a spaceship? Is that a lighting rig from a 70s disco? I don't know. It's clearly Doctor Who inspired, not just from the robot dog, because it's all set in a Welsh quarry. So um, <laughs> that's kind of summed that one up. But uh, the game is not as bad as the cover would make it look. But then again, what could be? So, and yeah, there is a dog in it. So it's not entirely incorrect, but just mostly. Next up, <laughs> professional footballer. Dave can draw a bit. Can we get him to do the cover? No, no. Dave's insane. Oh, no. Too late. So, <clears throat> I've written a story to accompany this one. <clears throat> <coughs> Nobody knows where the giant ogre lord came from, but they have learned to fear his dead eyes and alabaster fists. In order to appease him, a ceremony is held once a year where two men are forced to play football against each other until a goal is scored. The loser is eaten, then his bones are ground up to make bread. I'd love to know if that's supposed to be a specific footballer, manager, goalkeeper, escaped lunatic. I've got no idea. I really wish I had a high-res version of that. No, no, I don't. Right. <clears throat> Next up, it's bloody... It's something, <laughs> released for the MSX and Spectrum, only in Spain. This is, this is a mess, frankly. <laughs> I can't say a whole lot more to it than that. So you've got weird cat-faced monster, well, head, flying through the air, a load of pills, scared surgeon, syringe, and hairy trilobite? <laughs> End of a loofah? I've got no idea. Also, totally incorrect. It's a game about... Hang on, I had to write this down because it was so ludicrous. Um, a space vampire tramp <laughs> who has had to come to Earth and to constantly feed on blood. He probably should have gone somewhere else. I don't know, made of blood or something. Um, yeah, he looks nothing like this. He's not a cat. He's like a bat with a really long nose. I don't know where this came from. It's not in the game at all, but hey... Whatever Spanish artist was on duty that day really liked to draw blue cats. So here we go. Ah, so next one is a little bit of an evolution. How some of these changed over time as they released the game for various different pressings. It's Star Trek from Salamander Software. <laughs> Don't make me look. Oh, God, it's on the screen here as well. Um, <laughs> Normally, I only show the fronts, but I had to show the wraparound for Spock here, who is something quite special. I love the way they've got their logo into the screen. That's nice. Tell you what I hate about this, everything else, <laughs> particularly the colour scheme. But so Kirk 
analogue here is horrified because there's popcorn exploding out of the back of his <laughs> neck, apparently. Um, they've got the proper Starfleet logo, so that's nice. And, I mean, these are based on sort of the movie designs, aren't they, I think? But, yeah, it's just seeing this image is not making you think, hmm, this is one of those boring Star Trek games. Maybe that's what they were going for. It is one of those boring Star Trek games. Anyway, second pressing. Notice... <laughs> They got the watercolour guy in to uh, redo the art. Also, changed the name to Dragon Trek. It's for the Dragon 32. They realised they might get sued. I mean, the picture enough is frankly enough to do that. Probably sue them for some sort of psychological harm, I imagine. <laughs> but yeah, he now just looks a bit kind of bored. It's like, and action. Uh, right, cut. Mate, can you just, just give it a little bit more? A little bit more, mate. Third pressing. <laughs> totally redrew it. <laughs> They've removed the logo. I mean, this is just knit back to This is a lot better. I mean, you know, they've changed everything. They've given it proper lines. The asteroids now look well. They do look a bit like knickknacks, but they look more like rocks than the popcorn here. The weakness, of course, is that the face has gone horribly awry in some small manner, and now instead of looking shocked, he just looks really sassy. <laughs> Ah, next up, they finally got rid of it for the final pressing. And they used all the grey and blue Lego blocks to make that ship. <laughs> Going to ruin it for anybody else. I do love the way this guy, I don't know if, it, is that a hat? Is that a haircut? I can't really tell what's going on with that. But uh, finally, they did get rid of the beautiful art, which is a tragedy on no levels whatsoever. Chucky Egg 2. <laughs> You know what we were saying about off-putting things being inexcusable? Yeah, I think that's where we are with this. So, um, Spider's not very nice. Let, let's just go round here. Oh, I like the logo. It's drawn by John B. I mean, the first problem is it's incorrect. Chucky Egg isn't an egg. He's a little, the game stars a character called Hen House Harry, who's a small man with a hat like a sort of bowler hat thing, not whatever the hell this... I mean, it's supposed to be a cap, but it just looks like he's got a big tongue on his head. <laughs> the nose, the eyes, everything about it is grotesque. They've done that thing of putting too much realistic detail into a cartoon character and created this unpleasant monstrosity. I mean, the game's not quite as good as Chucky Egg 1, but it did not deserve whatever the hell this is. <laughs> Deary me. Pick and choose. Yeah, going to choose something else, I reckon. Something that doesn't have that on, because you know it's going to crawl off the cover and bite you while you sleep. Ah, uh, next up. <laughs> oh, God, I'd forgotten I'd put this in there. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's a lot going on with this one. <laughs> Incompetent? Yes. Incoherent? No. Inane? Yes. Incorrect, not really, inexcusable, perhaps. So, somebody's uncle has put his head through one of those um, cutouts at the seaside full of muscles, you know. Um, the, the gun is like, how is he holding that? What? I don't want to touch it with my hand, it'll get dirty. And of course, they've put the logo in front of his face. I mean,. How did this get out of the door? I don't understand. Oh, that face is a bit weird. Just stick the logo in front of it. It'll be fine. Imagine what it was like being Steve Back, having written your new game for the Amiga, getting a copy through the post of this cover on, and like... <laughs> I wonder if that's supposed to be Steve Back. I can't remember what Steve Back looks like. Damn, I wish I'd looked that up now. Anyway, Elite is the opposite of the artist who drew this. Next up. <laughs> Really wish I had a high-quality scan of this, but blood and guts. So what is the game about, just from looking at this? It's the cast of Ulf Wiedersein pet <laughs> have gone off for a medieval-themed weightlifting weekend with their pet cat? <laughs> I don't really know. Th this is quite worrying. I thought this bald guy had a fist covered in milk and was going <laughs> like that. Then I realised, actually, that's his hand. This is a drinking horn. Ah... Quite why what he's drinking is milk, I don't know, but uh, there we go. What the game actually is, is like a multi-level sports game. But all the games are things like, have a fight, 
drink loads of beer, yay, Vikings, all that kind of stuff. It's pretty bad, but again, does not deserve this. Also, the cat, I, nobody understands. <laughs> Maybe he was drawing it and wanted to get the cat in to amuse his girlfriend, I've got no idea. But thanks, Grieve Graphics, with your, with your logo that looks like an M. Didn't think that one through, did you guys? Next up, Biff! <laughs> now, I'm going to be honest, I quite like this one, but uh, most people violently despise it, so I've added it anyway. It's literally drawn with felt tips. <laughs> you can't really say much else there, but I mean, it's competently drawn, isn't it? The problem is it doesn't give you much of an idea of the game. I mean, basically, there's a monkey with a frozen shoulder standing near a river, <laughs> and uh, like a female monkey guarding their outside toilet? I, I don't really get what's going on, but the game's not bad, as Crash will tell you, giving it 80%. It's quite a nice little sort of platformer, puzzler, quite nice graphics. Um, just noticed his breasts, let's move on. Um, it's good old skate crazy. Big budget game, this. Um, these guys are horrified as... Right, so he's either borrowed clothes from Gary Glitter or Timmy Mallet, or done both and combined the two. He's roller skating in the middle of the road and about to have an accident looking at the people's faces, and he's picking up litter? Like, which is kind of the game, but... Guys, you need to make it look cool, not make it look like he's had to do this because the court told him to after he was caught shoplifting. <laughs> very, very odd image. <clears throat> I have included though, the title screen of the game, which I love, because it's really well drawn and very odd. <laughs> like, a guy is so excited to have attached his green joysticks to a pair of roller skates that his hat's flown off. <laughs> don't understand that at all, but I do love the <laughs> graphic style. It's beautifully drawn, but very, very odd. They should have just had a realistic version of that for the... No, that actually would have been worse. <clears throat> Next up, we get onto the Super Nin Super, sorry, standard Nintendo Entertainment System with Palamedes. So this game is about having some kind of migraine <laughs> induced by psychosis where the dice have come alive? and are rubbing their horrible, weird feet on your head? I don't... It's actually like a sort of cross between Tetris and a dice game and is really boring. But you, you can't say the cover is boring, at the very least. I would say it's fairly incoherent and it's really off-putting and therefore inexcusable, but... I mean, at least it's not boring, right? Kind of? What, what, why has he got... So, I, I, I don't want to look at this anymore. <clears throat> Next up, it's a classic. You've probably all seen it. Good old Mega Man, the original uh, American cover, I believe, for it, where they didn't like cartoon characters for some reason, so they got somebody with a very loose grasp of physical reality <laughs> to draw somebody in the world's baggiest, most ill-fitting suit. I mean, I, I can't really... I, I wrote a description of what I thought was going on from the game just from this cover. An escapee from Starlight Express waits to murder someone in a prog rock album cover. <laughs> I mean, it's totally incoherent as to what the hell's going on here, but yeah, it's very, it's really badly done as well. If you look, the top of that doesn't even line up with the rest of the helmet. It's like he's just broken it. Oh, I haven't got time to fix it, guys. I'll just have to go on. Hold this weird gun. Okay, I'm Mega Man. Infamously, uh, Capcom themselves actually brought this character back well, didn't bring it back, I suppose, but brought this version to life for uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, where it's actually a selectable character in the PS3 version. I mean, they've played it up for laughs, obviously. But uh, interestingly, I could find no high-quality footage of this character at all on the internet, so that's how popular it was. I even fired up my own copy to discover he's only in the PS3 version, and I've got it on PC, so... Uh, that was half an hour of installation. I'll never get back. But don't worry because now it's time for Foot Pain Simulator. <laughs> so, I do have a soft spot for these old minimalist Master System covers. Um, this one's obviously a black belt, a karate game. I think what really makes this one the worst, though, is... Why does it begin here? <laughs> I mean, come on, guys, you've got to draw it to the end of the cover. But yeah, it doesn't really give you much of an idea of what's going on. Probably the worst example out of them all, though, is pro wrestling. <laughs> I mean, you know it's pro wrestling, because it says pro wrestling, but that's like Vic 
I don't know, really hench Victorian ghost simulator? <laughs> I mean, it's like a nearly headless Nick has finally had the whole thing come off. It's very, very odd. Also, it kind of looks like he's feeding it as opposed to giving it the <laughs> Oh, I don't know, world's first Tamagotchi? I've got no idea, dearie me. But um, by, probably the weirdest conceptually out of these. <laughs> I mean, is it a simulator for putting a game in your master system? I don't know, they're just... Oh, uh, well, we've got some cover art. Yeah, but let's just take a photo of the cartridge. <laughs> also, if they'd actually put this art on this, it would probably be the best out of the whole lot because it would kind of look like it's coming and something's happening. So they thought, no, that will be too good. <laughs> I know a way around this. Susan's got a camera, get around, we'll ruin this entirely. Ah, uh, so, um, this is a thing that exists. Um, I'm guessing a dummy dressed up as the fictional late 80s musician Clint Ruin. Um, so, Graffiti Man, infamously one of the worst games ever released, so they thought they'd give it a bad cover too from Rainbow Arts. Really expensive game as well. Um, it, they just literally took like a stock photo of a dummy and I suppose the graffiti I do is, hey guys, we're going to spray paint it and look all crazy. But it just looks like a dead man. <laughs> I mean, the game's awful, but it's, give it some sort of movement, some sort of dynamism, something that isn't this. <laughs> An animated, it's like Weekend at Bernie's, the game. Oh my God. But at least it's better than Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody's brother wearing purple socks decided to pose, but sadly they didn't have a, a hammer, so they used awful CGI. They didn't have a hat, so they used awful CGI. They didn't have a long boat, fair enough. Again, used awful CGI. But the most inexplicable thing is this. <laughs> Why is there another version of him just floating in the sky? Action. I don't know. Also, it's nothing like the game. The game is just like a weird sort of maze game that's incredibly boring. And also has a really weird thing where the cover, um, or sorry, the title screen has like a really nice cartoon Viking, then the Viking's realistic in the game, and then if you complete the game, it shows you the cartoon Viking. Basically, every piece of art from this game was designed by a different person. None of them would speak to each other. <laughs> next up, there's some dodgy Street Fighter covers, but I think this is the worst one. I bought this game full priced because I'm an idiot. Um, so the gods are looking on at their terrible, terrible first attempt to create humans. <laughs> also, there's some uh, overcooked cauliflower because, you know, why wouldn't there be? Um, I mean, the poses are amazing. T-Hawk's arm here, probably longer than any human arm. I think he stole some of the length from Chun-Li's leg. Also, why are they shooting lasers out of their feet? I, I don't understand this one. It's one of those things where they've gone, take the strong images of the characters and give them to somebody who A, doesn't really understand what they look like and B, can't draw very well. His teeth are quite well done. Do you know what? I'm going to say that is the good focal point of this picture, DJ's teeth. Well done. You got something right, guys. Ah. So we had Eric and the Floaters. Then we had official Bomberman for the TurboGrafx-16, the uh, American... And I think kind of PAL official release of the PC engine. But yeah, this basically some 1950s B movie astronauts have gone mad and blown up somebody's house. <laughs> I, I, like, why not keep the nice cartoon? What is this obsession with trying to make a sort of realistic Bomberman, which Hudson Soft later <laughs> themselves did with Bomberman, what was it, Bomberman Neo, Bomberman Zero? Yeah, oh, oh, I've remembered that existed. Give me a second. <laughs> it's all right, it's gone. But sadly, this does still exist. I don't really understand this at all. Um, I, I think maybe this is what Robocop would look like if they'd made it for 5p in 1963. <laughs> but hey, at least it's got bright colours and the decent logo. I'm clutching at straws here. Also, what sort of gloves have square fingers on the end? <laughs> is that for, like using a touch screen? Oh, I've got no idea. Anyway, many of you will know why this one's in here. So this isn't technically bad enough on its own. I mean, it's a little bit too phallic, really, and sort of weirdly medical looking. Like, this is like a pill, and this is like some sort of bit of medical machinery or something. I don't really know. 
Do you know what this looks like, actually? Reminding me now, you know in The Matrix, where the, he had, Neo has the squid thing go inside him, like the little shrimp thing, and then when it comes out, it's like a glowing bit of metal. It looks like that. But many of you will know why I've put this version of Phalanx in, because next up, this was the PAL cover, this was the Japanese cover, the Americans got this. <laughs> Some of you hadn't seen it before. Good. My job here is done. <laughs> Who wants to guess at how many old men with banjos are actually in this game? Here's a hint. It's less than one. Um, yeah. The high-speed shooter in space. So here's Father Christmas with a banjo. And I think there's like a cut-off image of a dog or something near him as well. Like... Why would you not at least crop that out? Well, let's face it, that's the least question you ask for this. <laughs> at least there is a spaceship in it somewhere, but yeah. Nobody has an answer for why they thought this was a good idea, or why this would jump off the shelves and into American children's pockets. I mean, it's quite a good shoot em up but like, you, let's just move on. Let's just move on. <clears throat> to Power Instinct. Oh, yeah. Two men made entirely of sinew. Possibly they're worms that have been compressed into human shape. I don't really know. Also, they're like the sweatiest creatures ever born. He's, he looks like he's crying, this guy. Probably because his mouth is escaping his face. I don't know. But Also, a little bit of a hint. If you're trying to come up with a dynamic image to sell something, don't make the focal point, or the focal point even, the sole of somebody's foot. <laughs> That's not a particularly jolly image, particularly if you can't draw feet. I mean, it's like a, some sort of gammon joint they've glued toes onto. I mean, it's just the most unpleasant image I've ever seen. But not the worst SNES cover. For that, for me, is tough enough. Hey, punk, are you tough enough to look at this thing Rob Liefeld drew for us in his lunch break? We gave him $50 and coloured it ourselves. Master the moves to master me. Four colourful main characters to fight. Each character has at least 20 moves. We've had to put this on to try and explain what the game is. It's a one-on-one -on -one fighting game. It's the English version of a Japanese game called, I think, Dead Dance. Hang on, I'm going to check that. I didn't write it down. That was clever. <laughs> I think it's called Dead Dance. It's not a bad game. It's a Super Nintendo-only fighter. Not as good as Street Fighter 2. I think it's a Super Nintendo exclusive, actually, but you wouldn't know what the heck it is from this. Here's a load of words, and yeah, if that's not Rob Liefeld, it's somebody doing a very close facsimile of his art style, which was popular in the 90s comics at the time. But I'll tell you what wasn't popular in 90s comics at the time. <laughs> this man! <laughs> so, somebody drew the cover to Columns 3, and somebody else said, how can we make this appeal more to middle-aged men? <laughs> How about we cut out a picture of Mick and stick him so it looks like he has excreted a huge pile of gems? He's happy about it, though. I mean, you know, A, the torment is over, and B, he can sell all the gems. But I've never seen something that it just looks so stuck out and cut on. There's a um, Twitter account called... Hang on, make sure I get the name right... Sega Bits, there we are, at Sega Bits, um, had a little competition where they said, what's the worst art you can just stick this guy on so he's totally out of context? Not including the one he came from. Um, but they kind of ruined it by doing the best example themselves first. <laughs> it kind of ruined it because everyone's like, Man, in your example, you have hit too high. You're not really going to beat that. <laughs> there was another good one where they took the cover to Phalanx and replaced the spaceship at the top with him shooting along. <laughs> <But> <laughs> frankly, it looked so rude, I didn't want to bring it along. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, there was a game for the Mega Drive called The Terminator. The cover is the poster of the Terminator film, Arnie with the uh, laser-sighted pistol, looking very stoic with his uh, sunglasses on. Then they released it for the Mega CD, or the Sega CD as it's called, in America. <laughs> so, yeah, I haven't made this up as a joke. This literally is, somebody has just got the latest copy of Photoshop 2.5 and all the filters 
also all the cropping. That's the weirdest one. It's like, this is awful, mate. You've got to get the proper art in there somewhere. OK, fine. Control C, Control V. Jobs are good and I mean, so we've got sort of desaturation there. A d desaturation with a weird filter. It's all superimposed. Why am I still looking at this? I don't want to. He's bad cat to make everything better. And by everything better, I mean far worse. It's like a grotesque creature eating a stick of butter. Because <laughs> that's what all Hell's Angel cats do. They eat sticks of butter. You learnt that today. Don't forget. Um, so what goes on in the game? He gets drunk and belligerent in a bar. Great. Kids love that. Um, he hangs out near some bins within a, some sort of dog. He tries to climb a ball and falls off. And then he jumps up and down on a bar stool in front of an audience. <laughs> That's actually in the game. <laughs> so, uh, bad Cat is pretty bad, actually. It comes from Rainbow Arts in the same period they were making Graffiti Man because they had a lot of anger to work out against the world, I think. Um, so the game is basically an obstacle course. And so they had a game about a Hell's Angel cat. They're like, right, guys, it's going to have to be an obstacle course because what else would a Hell's Angel cat do? And, yeah, you just, like, balance on balls and jump from one bar stool to another while a crowd... Ch it's really weird. It's also extremely bad. Unlike street small... Ba <laughs> Sorry, I've forgotten this. No, <laughs> I've forgotten this one. Um, so street sports baseball, pretty good game. So I think this is actually the poster art to Kevin Bishop's next stand-up tour. I, I don't really know what's going on. Like, it's that thing of don't be inane. Don't pick the worst face you can possibly do and then just film something in front of all going, oh, 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 baseball. Oh, dearie me. But don't worry, they learned their lesson when they came to release street sports basketball. Also, I just told you a lie. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, this is pretty bad, guys, but how can we make it much worse? Oh, look like he's being electrocuted by the ball. Again, game's pretty good, but you wouldn't know it, would you? Oh, I didn't know there was an Amiga version. Well, that's something for me to ruin my life with later. Next up, it's good old Heartlight. <laughs> I've only just realised, he's from looking at this angle, he's literally hiding in a bush. <laughs> Hello. Would you like to buy some of my poisonous hearts? Oh, it's a thrilling game of action and adventure. It's a Boulder Dash ripoff, like a really obvious one. Um, released for the PC. I think there's an Amiga version. There's some sort of 8-bit version. But all the versions have this creature with lamps for eyes and stuck-on lips. <laughs> but hey, he's got a nice earring. That's something. It's ready to go, straight in the bin. Uh, <clears throat> so, this week on We Can See What They Were Trying To Do But Failed Miserably, it's Tongue of the Fat Man. Not a good title, in case you hadn't noticed. It's also known as Mondu's Fight Palace and Slaughter Sports. It's a one-on-one -on -one fighting game where the titular Mondu, also known as the Fat Man, He's not a man, so I don't know why it says that. He's like a weird alien with a tongue in his stomach, hence the tongue. This kind of makes sense on some very strange level if you've played the game. But if you just see the cover, it's a guy who stuck beads up his nose. So I think what they're trying to do is, these are his eyes, those are his eyebrows, that is makeup that's run, I don't know. So you're supposed to look at it as if it's like something with an inhumanly large mouth and those things. It doesn't work! I can't see this in any way than some twit has stuck some beads up his schnoz. <laughs> what? Don't do that at home, kids! It was a running joke in my family that if my dad ever saw a small bead of a proper size or a specific size, he'd say, look out, nose bead. Some child's going to get that, shove it up there, can't get it down, end up in casualty. And why? Because they wanted to imitate tongue of... Nobody wanted to ever take time of that together. Oh, dearie me. Anyway, who likes beaten up members of late 90s punk bands? The answer is... I mean, this is a very famous one, but for good reason. Carnage Rally. See, they've spelt carnage funny, so it's not... Why? Should have just called it Carnage Rally, guys. 
So is he dodging out of the way because he's being run over? I don't know. Really, it just looks like somebody found a tilt, uh, tint feature in Photoshop. Maybe they did then find a tilt feature, actually. So Whoa, no, don't I get no. Oh. oh, worst button mispress ever. I think what's actually happened is somebody has beaten him up so badly, he's actually coughed up the official Nintendo seal of quality. <laughs> Everyone hates this cover. Do you know the worst thing? Game's really good. It's like a really fun Micro Machines game. And it's mostly set in prehistoric times, as you can tell by a cast off from Green Day and a modern car. <laughs> Next up, Buster Move Arcade, Ar Buster Move 2 Arcade Edition. Right, so we're falling in the inexcusable by being an unpleasant image, but it's so stupid, so addictive, it should be illegal. Look how addicted this guy is. He had to stay up all night playing it. It's just a man who's bored. Don't show a really bored guy on the cover of your game. This is like the most basic thing. Hmm. It's a game about bubbles. It's quite a fast-paced action puzzler. It's got the little dragons from Bubble Bobble in. How about we cover the cover with boredom bubbles? And a really unpleasant image that he is in pain. He's in pain and he's bored, just like you can be if you buy Buster Move 2 for the PlayStation. Fortunately, they'd learned their lesson by the time the PlayStation 2 version came around. So, it's a tattooed baby blowing up a bubble that looks worryingly like it's full of blood or something, and you can see the game reflected in its sunglasses. Whose idea was this, and are they still allowed out? I don't know. Probably not. But... <laughs> <laughs> this is infamous, but for good reason. <laughs> Snow White and the Seven Clever Boys. <laughs> now, the actual game is literally about a woman called Snow White and seven clever boys. They're not dwarves in the game, they are boys. And they're pretty clever. But they've decided to rip off in CGI, well, I think CG, calling it CGI is an insult to computers, frankly, but um, <laughs> they've just tried to rip off the Disney designs really badly. You've got olive oil here, cosplaying as Snow White. You've got that. And then you've got uh, leery, evil, uh, upset, and shadowed as your favourite dwarfs. So Phoenix um, Games spewed out a lot of stuff like this. It's actually just a set of really bad mini-games and like a 30-minute crap film about Snow White. And not this Snow White. It's like she's singing a song. There's some clever... It makes no sense. Look it up on YouTube. Don't. Don't. <laughs> anyway, they decided not to follow that up with all their other games. Again, I'm lying to you. You've got dead Pinocchio and his rake-like fingers together with the dead cricket, Jiminy, with its rake-like fingers. Because, hey, who wants to, you know, have to rig all those and move them? This is my favourite, because that's a shop dummy. <laughs> this, this kind of reminds me of somebody famous, and I can't put my thumb on who, so that will annoy me for the rest of my life. Please don't tell me. I would like to live in my ignorance. Ah, <laughs> oh, dearie me. <clears throat> anyway, good old Phoenix. Well, this is kind of cheating, the next one, because they never actually released, or as far as we can tell, even wrote this game, for good reason. <laughs> the most unpleasant way you can... <laughs> Put forward Pac-Man ever. All right, guys, I'm going to eat the apple now, but I'm really unwell. Really <laughs> unwell. The weird thing is, this game seems to have never been programmed, which means the cover existed first, so they could put it in catalogues. So does this mean a programmer just got emailed this one day and said, write this game? He's like, <laughs> no! <laughs> he moved to Switzerland and was never heard of again, I'm presuming. But yeah, Phoenix Games um, listed a lot of games that were never released, but this is the only one I know of with a, a cover that makes me want to vomit, frankly. Also, they haven't even managed to get the brick texture. Let's stop looking at this. Let's just stop looking at this. So you remember we had that weird one earlier that was just a photo of the card? In America, <laughs> they decided to re-release DS games by just putting a picture of the previous release on there, giving this weird meta effect. I don't... Is it just to make you feel slightly vertigo in the play? I don't know. But hey, at least it's got the original nice cover art on it at a funny angle and reduced in quality, because yes. Anyway, it could be worse. 
It could be Batman who's got a migraine because people won't stop shouting about him about how good his game is. Like, come on, guys. If you're going to put a Game of the Year edition banner, fair enough. 10 out of 10, Arkham City, 5 out of 5 of the greatest games ever been bonus content, Game of the Year. Ah, ah. I mean, calm down, guys. My goodness. No wonder he's got a nosebleed, poor fellow. <laughs> I mean, you've taken what was quite a strong image and just ruined it beyond all bloody recognition. Anyway, now it's time to visit Taxidermy Farm. <laughs> where everyone is dead and it's their stuffed corpses. Except maybe this sheep, which could be the one that killed them and stuffed them. I don't know, but... I mean, it's supposed to be a family-friendly title. It's like a fairly basic farming simulator, but... Uh, yeah, who is seeing this? Didn't somebody just like email back and say, mate, could you just tone the eyes down just a little bit by like 20,000% maybe? <laughs> because that sheep is literally coming out of the cover and trying to eat my face. <laughs> Deary me. So we're going to end with my absolute favourite of all time, which I finally managed to get in high resolution and I will be printing it and covering my house with it. <laughs> That's my third lie of today. <clears throat> so we start off with one that's pretty bad, but not, I would have said, bad enough to be included here generally. Metro Cross, the home computer version of the Coin Up Classic. So Metro Cross is a game about running at very high speed down a checkered corridor in like a futuristic scenario. I mean, you're getting a sensation of speed, you're getting the sort of futuristic checkered floor, that's all good. They've made him look far cooler than he looks. He's just kind of a guy in sort of sports gear in the game. But the Americans didn't like this cover. Oh no. When this was released on the ST, the Commodore 64, and various other formats in America, they were like, no, no, no. No, this, this isn't good enough. We need a much stronger image. <laughs> I found this on a forum years ago, and somebody on the forum described it as the world's crappest image. <laughs> and I think he may have been onto something. Where do we begin? Where do we end? So, Cousin Gary, who you will remember as the world's most gormless man, is apparently bursting out of the cover of an 80s smash hits magazine. Um, th th that's kind of a road? There are no roads in the game. It's set in the future. You don't know this. I'm just skirting around the fact that they needed to use another photograph of poor old Gary here because it's just grotesque on so many levels. Who saw this and thought, hey, I need a bit of that action in my life. <laughs> I need to be a gormless man <laughs> falling off a skateboard. Whilst, I really wish they'd put a yo-yo on here, actually, so <laughs> it looked like he was at least doing something. You know what I mean? I do love the prancing guy here, though. He's, he's really getting into it and metro crossing to the max, but yeah. For me, I think this is my favourite, as in probably the worst, because everything about it is useless. Right, it's incompetent, it's badly put together, it's too many styles put together to make it look a mess, it's incoherent because you can't tell what the bloody hell's going on behind him, it's inane, can you tell why? Stop swallowing the light. A cat will get in there in a minute. It's uh, incorrect because it doesn't properly represent the game, and it's inexcusable because it's a massively off-putting image. Who saw that and thought, oh, that's so cool? <laughs> probably this guy's mum, and that, I imagine, is it. But anyway, I'm so glad to get that in a high-res format. I'll be selling prints of it later in your nightmares, so look forward <laughs> to that. And that is all we have for today. If you do find any awful uh, covers, just grab my email address and throw it away because I don't want to see them. This is more than enough. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.